Hi, I'm Jim Park, and welcome to this HGT Leadership Insights podcast. Most of us are at least somewhat familiar with the challenges that lie ahead in getting electric trucks on the road at scale. Compared to electric reefers, that'll seem like a walk in the park. Joining me on this episode is Paul Cruz. He's the Strategic Insights Leader at Thermal King. He's right in the thick of things when it comes to electric TRU development. Paul and I are going to take a 10,000-foot view of where development is at the moment and what it'll take to make electric TRUs as common as diesel-powered reefers. We also have an audio podcast with Paul. We're going to be diving a lot deeper into some of the intricacies of battery-powered reefers and what fleets will need to do to adjust to this totally new operating environment. Be sure to check that one out if you haven't already heard it. But before we dive into electric TRUs with Paul Cruz, remember to follow and connect with us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode of either the HGT Leadership Insights Podcast or HGT Talks Trucking. We'll be back with Paul right after this word from Thermo King. This episode is sponsored by and produced in partnership with Thermo King. Thermo King's mission is to improve quality of life. That's why they constantly innovate to find increasingly cost-effective ways to ensure that passengers and temperature-sensitive goods make it to their destination safely and efficiently. Their commitment to sustainability extends to the environmental impacts of their people, products, operations, and services. Thermo King invented transportation refrigeration in 1938 and will help keep your fleet on the move. Well, hi, Paul, and thanks for joining us on HTT Leadership Insights Podcast. Good to have you aboard. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you having me. You know, when we listen to the pundits talking about battery electric vehicles, you could kind of imagine that these things are just around the corner, that uh, it's just a matter of throwing a switch. But that's probably an overly optimistic assessment. Uh, it's really not quite as simple as just slapping a few batteries on a trailer and away you go, is it? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, it's it's really not, right? And the large tractor manufacturers have been working on electrification for a number of years. You know, COVID has delayed things. Uh, you know, but the challenges that they have are very similar to what we have on the uh, refrigeration unit side or, or TRUs for transport refrigeration units, right? And those challenges are still the fact that we need power storage, usually in the form of batteries. We need all of the power electronics and all of the charging infrastructure, both on board the TRUs as well as on the ground to support that. Uh, you know, and the, and the energy requirements for TRUs are also relatively large. And so it's not as simple as putting on a small battery pack and hoping or expecting to get the daily runtime that you need. So designing for that you know, full system and really an optimal system uh, is the trick uh, that we have. Um, you know, I would say too, the last point is additionally, you know, these trailers are gonna be tasked with being charged quite often, you know, between loading, staging, pre-cooling, unloading, um, and that's going to require a very flexible interface and architecture as well. Well, if you're thinking, you know, only in terms of the energy requirements that we're going to need to make this work, uh, can you sort of make a comparison for us between what we use today, a 50-gallon tank full of diesel fuel, and the, the battery requirements that we're going to need to make this work uh, in the real world? Sure. Uh, you know, that's a it's a good question and one that comes up often. Honestly, it's at the center of probably the biggest barrier to uh, rapid adoption, at least in the near term, on electric TRUs. And again, it's roughly the same thing on the tractor side. Uh, but to give kind of a good comparison, so yeah, today if you have a 50-gallon fuel tank uh, on a refrigerated trailer, that will give you you know roughly 80 hours of runtime, plus or minus. If you were to try to get 80 hours of runtime on an electric battery pack, you would need well over a megawatt hours worth of power. Now, for the sake of reference, that is 10 times larger than what you would see for battery packs on most um, cars. Uh, it's larger than what even like Tesla has announced on their tractors. So it's, it's a very large battery pack to get 80 hours. Clearly, we are not going to be investing in that or looking to put 80 hours worth of runtime uh, on a trailer. So you, we start to think about scaling that down to something that's more reasonable. So then if you consider you need maybe 15 hours of runtime, well, you know, that's a you know 250 kilowatt hour battery pack. So still relatively large. It's still pretty big. Yeah. So it's about trying to scale that down. And by the way, that 250 kW battery pack would weigh well over 5,000 pounds and cost, you know, $60,000 plus just for the batteries. 
So, so further shrinking that down to something that's much more reasonable and really making the system more efficient so that that runtime, you know, gets stretched and lasts longer. That's really the key. So the, the end result is something, you know, south of 200 kilowatt hours, probably between 100 and 200 is our estimate. Jeff, are you thinking over time when battery packs become smaller and a little bit more portable that this problem will work itself out? Or what do you see as a sort of long-term horizon on battery development that'll work to your favor here? Yeah, you know, it's like any technology, it will evolve. Um, power density is uh, always improving and that's just, you know, how much power can you put in the same amount of area? So that results in cheaper batteries and lower weight. Um, so that's beneficial and that's, you know, slowly getting better over the years. There might be some step changes that will dramatically improve that power density and cost. And so, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, and even you know, 20 years from now, our ability to put more power on a trailer for less cost and less weight will improve. It will improve, so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a tough message today. It's kind of a shock to see, you know, how much it's going to cost <laughs> yeah. and how much it weighs. But it doesn't deter us from, you know, getting to that future state. Uh, we're speaking with Paul Cruz. He's the insight leader at uh, Thermal King. We're going to take a short pause to get a word in from Thermal King here. And when we come back, Paul and I are going to dig into the difference between diesel and electric refrigeration units and explore the ROI on these battery electric TRUs. We'll be right back. Wondering how your business will meet new regulations and increasing market expectations for more sustainable operations? There's good news. In a world where sustainability has become business table stakes, Thermoking is going all in. They're investing more than $100 million to deliver a fully electric product in every segment of the cold chain by 2025. The effort includes launching Evolve, a new brand representing their all-electric product line for the truck, trailer, bus, rail, and marine markets. That means you can rest easier knowing that Thermoking is working day and night to deliver bold solutions for a more sustainable world that helps customers decrease their carbon footprints while still driving profit. Customer success has always been one of Thermoking's core purposes. The growing demand for electrification doesn't change that fact. That's why you can count on Thermoking to help meet your sustainability goals as you transition your fleets to stay ahead of the curve. Welcome back, Paul. Uh, how will battery powered refrigeration units be different from a, a diesel unit? Fundamentally, we still have motors and compressors and things that go around and go bang in the night. That, uh, what are some of the fundamental differences between the two? Yeah, you know, I would say the most fundamental difference is designing systems that are more efficient to be run off of just electrical systems, right? Today, TRUs kind of have a mix between being optimized for running off of an engine or being run off of electrical shore power. So it's kind of a mix, but there are a lot of efficiencies we can gain by purely designing, you know, the, the power electronics, the compressors, um, even the refrigeration system, you know, the, to the evaporators, right? There's a lot of uh, gains that can be had by just optimizing it around the fact that you're running on electric. So that'll be a, a big game changer for us in terms of how much power it takes to run um, the units. Also, of course, because you have, you know, finite power storage, um, you know, and everything else, that efficiency will probably have the biggest impact on what we just talked about, which was, you know, how long can these things run and how big do the battery packs need to be. Um, and then lastly, I would say just smarts, right? It's how, how smart are these units so that if you have exceptions where runtime is limited or something happens, Preserving that load is always our, our core critical mission, right? That's kind of the, the one thing we're trying to protect is keep, keep that load from going bad. Mm -hmm. Electric units, I think, have a lot of potential to provide uh, you know, better alerts, uh, predictions on something going wrong, um, or alerting the user on, you know, if you need to take some action well in advance um, versus what we deal with today because, you know, uh, diesel systems have a fairly infinite runtime relatively speaking to electric mm -hmm. so let's look at this then from the uh the customer's point of view the end user uh fleets uh folks who are watching this video uh we know the cost is going to be significantly higher there's going to be some weight penalties uh how do you guys pencil out the roi at this point acknowledging that we're still in pretty early days yeah so you know return on investment or roi is 
always a tricky thing to calculate given that everyone you know, uses TRUs differently. Um, but I'll say that currently it's just not very good without subsidies, to be honest, right? Okay. And you consider, you know, any new technology, uh, that's usually the case. I, you know, say when a DVD player came out in the late 90s, you know, it was well over $500 and five years later, it was a tenth of that, right? So technology up front is always more expensive and it will get better fairly quickly. Um, but I would say that right now, the ROI on an electric TRU is generally 10 years plus, which for some you know, fleets is uh, well within their trade cycle. And so there is a benefit there. Yep. Um, but, but the reason why I think it's a lot longer than maybe some people expect is you know, fuel savings um, you know, are not as great when you consider diesel still relatively cheap compared to where it could be, especially in other countries. Um, our electricity is, uh, you know, does cost something, especially if you're, uh, you know, incurring peak charges, you know, that can add up. So it leads into that, um, you know, maintenance, it will be very favorable on electric units. They, they require significantly less maintenance because there's, you know, less moving parts. There's not an engine, um, you know, but when components fail, you know, later into their life, those will be fairly expensive. Um, and then lastly, residual value, it has a pretty big impact today on uh, you know return on investment and, and total cost of ownership, uh, and residual value can be quite good on technology today, right? Even a you know five ten year old refrigeration unit can be uh, sold for quite a bit of money, but mm -hmm. uh, on electric units, it's yet to be determined what that will be, largely because of battery replacements, right? Our, the batteries are going to have a finite life, and given the sheer cost of those battery packs. Uh, you know, that may create even a negative residual value on units until we find a better way to either, you know, extend that life out to, you know, 12, 15 years, or, uh, you know, battery packs are just simply cheaper. So when you add all that together, crunch it all together, currently the ROI is not very strong without subsidies, um, but it will get significantly better. And it's our goal to, to work very hard to make that happen when it comes time for fleets to have to adopt units. Okay, Paul, well, thanks for your insight on that. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into these subjects and a couple of others on the audio portion of this interview. You can join us over there at the uh, HDT Talks Trucking Audio Podcast. You can find that on our website or on most of your podcast platforms. Uh, Paul, thanks for joining us today. I sure appreciate it, and we'll see you over on the other side. All right, thanks, Jim. I always appreciate it. Thermo King wants every child in the world to have an ice cream cone. That only happens if their products help customers deliver refrigerated goods. Whether you transport frozen tuna, fresh produce, pharmaceuticals, or anything else that needs refrigeration, count on ThermoKing to keep your business ahead of the curve with advances in electrification, telematics, and more. Discover ThermoKing's latest innovations at thermoking.com.